Hey there, Todd Conaway here, and welcome to Organizing Your Canvas Course Better Than a Sock Drawer. So my sock drawer uh, is mostly organized. Um, you probably wouldn't make any sense of it, but uh, because I know it well, because I've worked in it for a long time, just like you and your Canvas course, it appears to be organized. To other people, maybe not so much. So the trouble is, how do we organize things so that we all know how to find what we're looking for? Um, so what I'm going to do today is take you through some things that may help that. Uh, first, I'm going to go through the agenda, kind of tell you what we're going to do, and then we're going to take a look at the things uh, that I want to show you, and then we'll be done, uh, and I'll review what we've done. So uh, the first thing in the agenda is uh, we're going to wonder whether or not we can orient our students to our course, and certainly we can. We can help them both in the kind of how to understand basic Canvas elements, but then we can also help them understand where we've put those elements. So we're going to take a look at a couple examples of that. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the uh, age-old question of do I organize my class by modules or pages or both, uh, which of course there is no right answer to that. Um, but we're going to look at some examples uh, and you can decide for yourself the benefits of uh, each. Uh, and then we are going to take a look at the uh, course files location, which uh, you may have looked at on occasion, but I can tell you just by working with faculty for many years that uh, oftentimes this is just where all the files go. And when you copy your course year after year, those files get more and more and more. And uh, at some point you just have a big pile of files and it just confuses everything. So we're going to look at that. Then we're going to take a real quick look at course navigation, which is an easy solution to helping people make good choices about where to go. If you only give your students one choice, for example, they probably won't get lost. Um, so we're just going to minimize uh, maybe the navigation. Then we're going to look at um, some of the dangers of copying and pasting in our world today and uh, and how a Canvas tool called the Link Checker might help you out there. Uh, then we're going to look at naming conventions, naming things in your Canvas course. Uh, everybody's got their own name for things and how they organize courses, so we're going to take a look at a couple of the options there. And then um, finally, we're just going to kind of wonder about when do you clean out your course. So that's kind of what we're going to do, and we'll get started again here at the top. Um, do you need a map for your sock drawer, right? So one of the things you can do for your students is to help them navigate Canvas, right? Get an overview, <coughs> excuse me, of Canvas. Um, that's not a bad thing. So perhaps you might have an entire module made up of how to do things in Canvas. And you could call it being an online student. Uh, we have this pre-built for you in the Canvas Commons, uh, the same exact one. You can turn on and off some things. But not only does it cover like how to do things in Canvas, and these are just, uh, in most cases, the videos from the uh, Instructure, the company that owns Canvas, but it also has some of our UW policies, uh, where to find help uh, for Canvas beyond what we've provided here. and. Um, and so it's just kind of an overview of the more technical elements. So that's one way you can help your students learn about the tools that are used. Another way you can help them wander through a class is by giving them a video of the course. And in this video, this instructor goes through how to do things. He shares uh, what's in the course, and he just, that he's just using a screen capture just exactly like I'm doing right now to walk you through each of the uh, elements in the course and explain each one in detail. This one is uh, 10 minutes and 29 seconds long. Uh, that might be a, a bit long, uh, but he does a great job of walking his students through his class. So here, for do you really need a map for your sock drawer, um, maybe your students might need to know how to find things and how to use them, and they also might 
benefit from you in your own voice explaining where things are in your course. So we have some Canvas tutorials and we have a screencast by the instructor of finding things in the course. So the next question here is uh, modules or pages. Uh, we're just looking to uh, have clear directions for everybody, yourself and your students, on where things are, how to find them, and how to use them. That's what we're trying to do. So there is no right or wrong. I can tell you that uh, some people prefer modules. So this is kind of a the module look, as you know, the home page. We have getting started right at the very top so people know where to start. Uh, thankfully, it's a long vertical list and most people start at the top anyway. But it just goes down and each week is named something. Week one in this case, it has a date and a topic. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty good way to organize things. It's kind of like folders of papers. Uh, one folder is called week one, one folder is called week two, and that's something we can all pretty much understand. So, um, you know, modules is not a bad way to go. You'll notice here, at least at the, the first impression, is that it's not terribly aesthetic. Uh, it's kind of a lot of text uh, and some green. So another way to organize your class is to do it by pages. So this class is organized by pages and it's a little more visually appealing. Uh, this class literally only has like I think 10 pages in it plus the weekly discussions and the weekly assignments and whatnot. So it's really minimal in the amount of things that it has in it. Um, but again, we have a start here so students can go there and begin there. Um, we have a, a each week is divided up uh, with a introduction. It's just a, another vertical list, but in this case you can add some elements that make it look a little bit more aesthetically appealing, right? So um, these are this is another vertical list of the same content. It just looks a little bit different. Um, so you have the modules and you have the pages. Here's a combination of those two, right? So this home page on this class looks nice kind of weird here, but um, when you go to one of the places, it just goes to a module. And so it just gives a, a easy one click into where you are in the course. Um, it's kind of, it's just a combination of that aesthetic home page and the use of modules for a, a long vertical list of things. So those are two ways that you can create a course. Uh, the next thing we're going to do here is just talk about course files. I'm going to just click on course files in this particular course. Uh, this is just my sandbox, but it's got a ton of, well, some stuff in it. Um, you'll notice that, at least on the left side, where the folders are, um, I have lowercase images, uppercase images. I have no idea which one's which, and course image, which is just the um, part of the... Uh, card for canvas um, but I guess the story behind this is that I have seen syllabus I have seen five years of syllabi in courses all version one version six um, most of them are thankfully unpublished but that's not always the case um, I have seen years worth of canvas content uh, in a single class that's just replicated over and over again. And um, it makes it difficult when you're trying to add a link to a document or a page or add a, a link to an assignment uh, in the instructions. It, it just gives you this huge long list of stuff instead of just the only things that are in the class. So I'm gonna go back to um, just as an overview, the stuff that should be in your course files is the stuff that you're actively using. And if you say, oh, I keep it there just in case I need it, then put it in a folder called the stuff I might need just in case. Um, you can, in files, uh, create um, folders in the upper right hand corner. So you could literally have week one, week two, week three, week four. It would be 
highly organized, right? And wouldn't it be nice to have a highly organized um, uh, class or files? Okay, so uh, that is the course files little uh, soapbox um, event. Now I'm going to take a look at course navigation. So um, that, of course, is this left-hand uh, bar. Um, in my case, there's things here that, that you obviously don't need. I would say that in some of these classes here, you can see that the only things that are visible to students in this class are uh, four items, right? The home page, which is the modules, the announcements, discussions, syllabus, and grades. Um, in this class, the only thing that is here is home, announcements, syllabus, a link to the uh, digital textbook, and grades. Um, and in this class, uh, it has the home page, the announcements would be visible if they were there. And again, syllabus, discussions, grades, and in this case, people and modules are both available. Um, so looking at a class like this, how you change that briefly is to click on settings at the very bottom of the screen and then uh, click on navigation. And it's literally just dragging items from one place to another. So the things that are up here will be visible to students uh, with the exception of these uh, three, and there's a few other ones. But anything that you drag down here will disappear from student view. And if you click Save at the bottom, that will make those things inaccessible to them. Um, so pretty easy to do. Uh, you've probably done that before. If not, I suggest that you do that. So there you go, course navigation. Uh, so the dryer ate my sock. So um, if you copy, you've, you have noticed this before, if you copy and paste from a Word document or some other website and then you, or you copy it from there and then you just paste it into Canvas, sometimes it looks really weird. Uh, and it doesn't behave like you would expect it to. So the danger of copying stuff from one website to another is that the um, one, it doesn't work like you thought, and two, uh, it might be that um, you uh, can't form reformat it without using very tricky HTML stuff. So, and, and let me give you another example. So if you are in one class from 2017 and you copy an assignment and in the directions for that assignment, there's a link to something in the class and you paste that stuff into your new Canvas course for 2020, that link from a student's perspective will try to go back to your 2017 class. It'll look fine, but when a student clicks on it, they won't be able to go back to that 2017 class because they were not enrolled in it. It'll work for you as a teacher because you are enrolled in that 2017 class as a teacher, but it won't work for your students. And you won't know that until you get an email from your students saying <clears throat> this doesn't work. So there is uh, something in Canvas. If you click on settings at the lower left, um, you can um, get what's called a um, link checker. And so it will show you a list of things in the class. So for example, in, in our case, right this second, uh, in this class, I made a page that had links to things that a student in this class would not be able to access. And the link checker tells me as much right here. Um, I link to other classes outside of this class. So it, the link checker will just kind of alert you to things that your students may not be able to access. So uh, naming stuff in Canvas, right? So let's take a look here at some of the options. Um, you, you may or may not use week one. Uh, you might have dates. You might have topics. Again, it, it, it's up to you. Some of the things that I frequently see are uh, files that are attached that, that end with .pdf or .docx. Um, wouldn't it be weird if I added a .docx to this, right? I don't need this information right here as a student, right? You, you don't need to know it's PDF or a Word document. 
Um, so by clicking the three dots on the right side of any item in Canvas and going to edit, you can get rid of those extensions is what those are called. And it looks cleaner. It's less information and less is better. Uh, the same is true up here in the uh, module name. If you go to edit, you can add your own dates if you wish or topics, uh, whatever you find useful. And you can, I'll, one of the things I'll warn you about, if you put a date and you copy the class, you will have to remember, obviously, to go back and change that. Um, so there's another thing you can do here to separate information, uh, and it's called, the, excuse me, it's called a text header. So um, in this case, it's pretty straightforward. I don't have anything indented. Uh, as you may know, if you uh, click on those dots, you can indent things slightly if they're kind of subtopics of something. But you can also add what's called a text header and you can make sure that students know what's below that is different stuff. It's just a non-clickable item. Uh, you'll have to make sure it's published, but it's non-clickable. You can't do anything. You can just tell them that this is the course reading or uh, you know, additional uh, supplemental information. So there is that. So let's go back to the sock drawer here. Um, yeah, so finally, once in a while, you take the socks out and vacuum it. Um, you know, it, in the digital age, as you probably know from your My Documents at your house or your My Photos, it's really easy to create an awful lot of stuff and um, put it somewhere. That's what the internet does. That's what all our memory does in our computers. So um, how often do you go in and sweep it out, clean it up? Um, if it's not useful to you in your course, how do you know? When do you get rid of it? I'm going to vote that you take that the opportunity to do that more often, perhaps, than you have in the past. So that the stuff that's in your course is only the stuff that is necessary for your course. Um, like. Why do I have at least 12 pairs of socks in the back of my sock drawer that I have not worn in like, I don't know, 10 years or more? And that's the story here. Thanks for visiting.